Hi, I'm Mike Melton. I'm the Area Fire Management Officer for the Division of Forestry, Fire, and State Land, so I supervise uh, Southwest Utah. So what were the efforts today? Uh, a lot of aircraft. We're getting uh, a lot more hand crews, hotshot crews, Type 2 IA crews arriving on scene. They're coming from all over the West. And, uh, you know, we're, we're holding the line with the aircraft, and as it is safe to engage, we're engaging with the hand crews and the engines. So how many crews are out here currently? I can't give you a good number right now. I'm not on top of that. I'm sorry. That's okay. So what are we looking at for the fire size and containment? Okay, it's just over a thousand acres. We uh, we measured it at 9, 000, or 957 acres at eight o'clock last night. So whatever growth we've had, you know, over the last 20 hours or so, uh, you know, and we'll fly it again this evening in order to, uh, you know, get another good accurate um, size on the fire. So it's over just over a thousand acres. And containment? Zero containment at this point. It's going to take some time. And the reason it's going to take some time is look at the fuels. There's a lot of dead trees and all of that. And, you know, those, those things can fall on people. So we've got to go slow and easy and make sure we take care of those hazards as we secure the fire line. So how does containment work? In layman's terms, how would you explain well, that? Well, containment in layman's terms is we have a very, very high probability that that piece of the line is not going to give us any more problems, uh, that it's going to stay within the lines. Now, once we go all the way around the fire and contain it, then we will work a bit longer to make sure that the fire is controlled. And controlled means it's going to be able to take a lot of wind and not escape from us. You know, we don't want to start this all over again. So we're just being vigilant, going slow, and that's what it's going to take. That's that's the way this is, the game is played. So what's the game plan going into tonight and then the next few days? Okay, um, tonight we'll uh, have a, a skeleton night shift out in the, in the community, making sure we don't have any flare-ups around the homes. And then tomorrow morning we'll have a Type 2 incident management team, Great Basin Team 4, uh, we'll take command of the fire at 6 o'clock in the morning and assume command of the fire. Those are specialists that come uh, from all over uh, the Great Basin, from Utah, Idaho, and uh, Nevada. And so Type 2 means they're more equipped to handle something in the scope? More experienced. The complexity level matches their, their capabilities, and uh, it's, it's a real good incident management team. We're glad to have them. So I know there's going to be a couple challenges with the weather in the next few days. What can we expect to see? Warming and drying is is uh, the big headline. You know we're going to have some record challenging heat that uh, will occur. The humidity is supposed to drop a little bit more. Um, you know we'll we'll see what happens with the wind. Wind is always our foe. So you know we'll we'll look at uh, look at some challenging days to come. Where's it currently moving? Uh, the fire is actually, it's, it's moving uh, from the uh, west to the east and is, is uh, you know, just kind of chunking along uh, real slow. Like I said, it's got a lot of retardant around it. And a lot of the smoke that you're seeing is actually flare-ups within the perimeter of the retardant line. How much of a threat is it to home and other structures? Well, there's, what... In, in fuels like this, fire will hide from you until it wants to pop up when the conditions are right and, and show itself again in, again, this real heavy fuel. Until we have people go over the ground and make sure that there's nothing there, those things are going to continue to happen. They're, we're going to have these things pop up and, and give us little fits here and there. How many homes have been damaged at this point? At, at this point, we, we can confirm one home lost and a few damaged. Um, we, once we secure that, that area in the community a little bit more, the local fire department will put a, an assessment team together and go in and get some real good information on, on what's going on right now. The situation's still quite fluid. Do you, have, do you anticipate how far it's going to head east at this point? Or no, no, just... I, I wish I had that crystal ball. <laughs> I really did. Uh, but no, I, 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 I'd hate to speculate on that. Again, conditions yeah. are, are, are bad. And uh, you know, if we get some wind, it, it could it could become problematic again. But we do have an overwhelming amount of aircraft and personnel on scene, so feeling cautiously optimistic that we're making some headway. Any idea how it started? 
fire is under investigation currently. I'd hate to speculate until you know uh, the investigators really give us this is how the fire started. I know that there's lots of people, lots of outlets that are that are giving some speculation. I'm not going to go there. It, it right now we're we're letting the investigators do their things and and we'll we'll uh, address it once it has been concluded. Is there any way that people can help? The way people can help right now is to be super careful. You know, it, it just takes one spark. That's all it takes and it's off to the races. This fire went so fast and we're here at 8,000 feet.